everybody, good buddy Kyo here with the ball. Hello again. So we're talking more bad god today. Hooray. 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 Today Hooray. we're talking to... <laughs> Today we're talking about them characters. Who's all the players in this fucking farce? Well, tragedy. Whatever Shakespearean nonsense this is. I would call this a farce. <laughs> This is a farce for the most part. Outside of the rebellion. Yeah. That happens. Well, y you got your ups and downs. It's a story. Anyway, so let's go into it. So, the main character, the titular, the titular, whatever, bad god of the series, Nivelnik, or Nivel for short. He's a nightmare creature. Gone insane by gaining the power of a madman. That's explained later. Something fucking snapped at him, and he became power insane and got a god complex. He's the one who coined the term Lamb of God phrase for, you know, everyone, and really made up all of the terminology for everybody, and is in love with religious iconography. 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 I can speak. <laughs> Especially when it comes to building up his own self-image. It legitimizes his own worth to himself as it least somewhat does with the rest of humanity. He can low-level shapeshift, so he can change his form, but it's only to certain things, like either making himself more human, like changing his skin tone to look more Caucasian or whatever to make what the people around him look better, or his natural skin tone, which is sort of a light gray. Two, a fucking eldritch abomination form. That form he kind of gained, well, it's more twisted and weird with his new curse he got, but again, that's explained later. It's fucked up. But he can't really transform to other people or much. Just things between those. His form's technically not his own. He's actually a really smaller creature, and his body's more of a meat puppet than anything. So when he's attacked and stuff, that's how he can regenerate easier and how he can do stuff, because it's not really his own body. He has pale red hair... Pale red hair! Pink! Pale red! And he has red eyes, though the red eyes aren't his original eye color, but he doesn't remember what they were like beforehand. Because of the red, it stings his eyes. Like, if you ever had contacts, and if you put cleaning solution on them instead of saline solution to put them oh in, it hurts a fucking lot. But the glasses he wears help alleviate that pain and give him less of a headache. So it, you know, makes it less hard to see. So it doesn't really strain his eyes and makes it less stingy. Yeah. And the red eyes are, again, more of a curse than anything. And they have affect his mental state horrifically. They give him severe levels of anxiety that he never had before. And borderline schizophrenia. Like, literally, he can hear his anxieties talking to him to the point that he can turn his head. And he's being told that he's hated by everyone. Like, a sort of voice you hear that if you go near a cliff, it says, JUMP! But he literally turns to look to see who's the one who said that to him. It's Jump. not fun. You can fly! Exactly. In the beginning, he believes they exist, for the most part. That it's his conscience or something, or someone nearby telling him things. So, it gets hard to differentiate what's nonsense in his head and what's outside. It's not very good. He doesn't really have much outlets of help for it. But, when the anxiety gets way too much, he will unwillingly transform. Just, his emotions are very emotionally charged with his powers. So... It'll all just explode in a release of stress, and he'll become an eldritch abomination and wreck everything. So he needs to be put down either by being talked down, if it's not as bad as it is, or physically put down, mostly by Vanya, because he's the one who mostly puts up with him. Reluctantly. Yeah. During the story, he starts to learn that the voices aren't really true, and they don't really have the brightest ideas. He's got some mental health issues. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. <sighs> Moving 
going on? Next. We go to the shepherd, quote unquote. The very same Nov Godot that keeled over in the end at the end of chapter zero. He was resurrected officially to educate Nevo about nation kind because Nevo kind of I don't know, killed them all. And unofficially, because he happened to look like someone Nevo was rather attached to in his past. He's super bitter about his situation, and is constantly trying to push Nevo's buttons. Cause I'm pretty sure he just kinda wants, at least initially, just wants to join the rest of his nation kind. And it's just like, why? Why do I have to be the only one? That sucks. Eat a dick. Bitter, 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 bitter. He's also deeply resentful of Nevonik for hijacking his religion to bloat his own ego with. This doesn't stop. It never does. Because the guy really, really likes to push the imagery as far as he can take it. And when he starts dubbing Tver as the Lamb of God, he just throws his hands up. Just like, what? You're gonna give this kid a complex. He is not Jesus Christ. What is wrong with you? Gah! But he's the son of God. You're not God! I'm gone now! You're not! You're a dictator. Uh, sure. Can dictators perform miracles? It's not a miracle. You forced this to happen because you took everything that was wrong with your world and you smashed it with ours. Fuck you. <laughs> Bad, this is, that is basically what the first 50 years or so of his of this new AU was like yeah a lot of bitterness he's dealing Vanya I mean with about uh, a couple hundred di conflicting emotions regarding the lambs and Nevo himself as we see as we've seen such as with the uh, bloody Sunday strip with poor Russia your per a nation kind's personal feelings can be overridden by those of their bosses or their peoples so, they're pretty much just very pretty puppets. And he can't really tell, especially near the end, where his personal feelings end and, tho and those of his people's begins. How much of an influence do his people have upon him and his attitude towards Nivonik? It's uh, something he wrestles with a lot. It's one of the biggest reasons why he has that drive to bring back the other nation kind. Because at the very least, he can sort his own feelings out and be done with it. He's kind of- he's stuck wearing manacles, or, um, kind of like chain links, because Nevo put them on him, so he wouldn't be able to escape the compound and run, or join all the other nation kind and be dead. Sometime after the lambs come along, Nevo takes them off. Kind of. He severs the chain on them. But, keep- Vanya keeps them around, kind of in the same way that- even Nick named himself. Just kind of a reminder of how far he's come along. When he wants to return- He is in this for the long con. He wants to return the world to its former state. Because as broken and bullshit as it is, it's still better than this crap. He is the primary caregiver of the lambs. In that he is their teacher. He is their- He cooks for them. He cleans up after them. Well, servants he cook. He kind of, well, he still cooks. Are you mad? Yeah. Like, especially when it comes to specific dishes, like Ulka. He loves that shit. He wouldn't let anybody else cook it. Tara originally gave him a goal and meaning again after f kind of floating around with no real motivation. And then the other lambs kind of gave him that extra push and direction. He balked at Nevo's initial family ideals when it came to raising the lambs, and instead opted for a more of a classroom or boarding school environment. It would make things less hairy and awkward later on down the road. He was trying to avoid the Westermark effect, which is basically when, um, what makes people not want to have uh, intimate relations with their siblings. You don't want to bang someone that you grew up with. So if you keep them if you sort of make the setting a uh, a boarding school or some sort of classroom environment you avoid that that way when it gets old when they can become older and they're independent 
they don't have those old requisite feelings holding them back anymore. It's one more step he wants to try and fix the world to the way it used to be. The lambs are the next topic. They all have a dedicated uniform. They have a smock, some kind of pant or bloomers, and they're not allowed to have shoes anymore. They're not allowed outside anymore without express permission and an escort, and heaven knows they can't leave the compound. And it's considered holy ground, because, lol, God lives there. <sighs> Can you hear my eye roll? Yes. The colors for their smocks are chosen by the lambs. For instance, um, Fele in his green smock. But old flag colors are not allowed. At least for the most part. Favorites are allowed- are- they're kind of allowed to bend the rules. And Fele is one of Nevo's favorites. But everyone else? Nope. Father is paranoid that they're going to remember something if they see their old flag colors. All of them wear the shepherd's tack on their collar. It allows them to pass through certain doors in the compound. Now, modifications to the uniform are, forms are made on a case-by-case -case basis, like with Feli's apron. But individual streaks appear as they get older, and they start to connect deeper with their home culture. Like... Yao's hair ornaments and Feli's um, head scarf and things like that. It much to Nevo's horror, because it just means they're starting to kind of lean away from him and disconnect from him. He doesn't have as much control over them anymore. Yeah, he's kind of a control freak. We come to the first, the proto lamb Tver. He's a small babu, at least initially, that just wants father's attention. He's dubbed the Lamb of God by Nevo. Much to Vanya's horror, because this child is not Jesus. What is your issue? Gonna give he's him a god complex. God. He's, he's not your son! Blech. He's curious, he's inquisitive, he's very much a joiner and a giver. And he takes his position as the oldest one kind of seriously at first. He doesn't like being um, pushed out from social gatherings or ignored. He's not used to it. So when the other lambs kind of grow apart from him and they start to kind of coalesce into their old groups, things like the BTT and whatnot, he kind of starts to withdraw from them. He doesn't know how to handle it. He gets- he kind of develops a low self-esteem streak. And as he gets older, he becomes more independent and becomes kind of sassy and sarcastic. Of all these lambs, though, he's the only one that's allowed to wear Nevo's personal colors, purple and gold, or his drapery. World's bro the world brooch eventually gets given to him when he's appointed heir, and he uses it to kind of push his influence when he's finally allowed to go outside on his own. Then we come to the first generation of lambs. Francis, Yao, Arthur, Matthew and Alfred, Feli and Ludi, and Yvonne. Arthur's a really salty, bitter bitch. He's bitter as hell over not being the oldest and considered the most important in the group. He wants to be in charge, but he ain't. Yao is kind of pushy. He has to have his own way in everything, and he's very particular about how everything is arranged. He believes a lot in luck. He wants everything to be lucky, and as such, he'll move chairs around, he'll shuffle furniture, he'll shift colors in places, and he won't have things like an, a heater facing a water source, things like that. Francis is fascinated by fairy tales, and he calls himself the big brother of the group, even if he's not technically the oldest one. Feli and Ludi act as a single unit. Ludi is very quiet and withdrawn and acts as, Fel as Feliciano's guide. Feliciano is very nearly blind, evidence of the way he died as an adult. He didn't die very good. No, his was kind of ruthless, because he tried to befriend Neva before he died, and Neva's like, yeah, sure, why not? And then Neva fucking energied him in the fucking face, and eyes, possibly he ate them? It's possible. Just to see what would happen. Neva, you, you dick. He eats people! I don't think that's true! I know, but the eyes in particular, 
Yes. Creeper. Very Yvonne much so. is... Oh, oh, sorry. And something about it, too, of, like, when he did bring him back, since we're talking about the Philly thing, might as well get all this info out right now. Um, mm -hmm. When he did try to bring Philly back, that was an accident of, like, shit, I don't know why he he's blind like this. this. None of the others came out like this. This isn't good. And so he was like, okay, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. And he inwardly thinking, fuck, it's because I ate his eyes, wasn't it? Fuck, okay. So he tried to, and then he realized as he was going on how the lands are starting to work a bit more together to be able to get this kid some help. And he's like, wait a second, this can be sort of a thing to present to everyone. Well, not present, but this can sort of be a lesson to everyone that you need to work together as a family unit to be able to all work because some of them aren't able, don't have the same um, abilities as you do. This might be a good lesson to humility, especially when they get older and need to, you know, talk to people and stuff. So he decides to purposefully keep Philly having horrible eyesight. And also it makes Philly more dependent on him and gives more thing of like, yes, father can do a lot of things for you. He can provide you with more sight. He can do so many things to help you if you let him. So he personally kind of sabotages it using Philly as sort of a guinea pig for it, which pisses Vanya off once he realizes it. Yeah. They have, their version of Christmas is New Year's, because it's easier for everybody around the globe to kind of celebrate on New Year's, because that's a cohesive event for almost everybody. Um, almost every year, Vanya asks Nevo to give the poor kid better glasses, or to fix his eyes, because he knows full well he can do it, and he's just being a prick about it. He never- he can never get him to cave, though. He, he tries. He can give him better glasses, but it- it'll refuse by much, so he can just see a bit more details every time, so... But as an- when he comes to be an adult, he can see perfectly fine. He likes to paint, too. And he paints in uh, a very kind of blotchy style, and you can only really see what it looks like from a from a really long distance away. Or squint. So the painting changes depending upon how far away or how close you are. But it's still very pretty. Yes. Yvonne knits to keep himself calm. He's kind of anxious. He's easily startled. He likes to pal around with Francis, and he idolizes him. You wee abu. With an O U I. <laughs> Just like in real life. Hey. <laughs> Matthew and Al are also a single unit. Maddie is one of Nevo's personal favorites, while Alfred is always very uneasy around him. He prefers the Shepherd's Company far more to fathers. Calls him mom sometimes. Like every kid does when they're in elementary school. They got, got to do it at least once and get humiliated in front of everyone. Yeah, I think Alfred does it the most. Yeah. God, that pisses Vanya off. You're not your mother! Ah. Rip. The second generation comes along later. Romano, Spain, we get the first girls, Belarus and Ukraine, Japan, Prussia, Hungary, and Lithuania. Romano's a sun sun piece of shit. He ends up developing a crush on Tver. He later leads the revolution as well to overthrow Mr. Bad God. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. Antonio bails out on his own generation to go form the BTT, naturally with Francis and Gilbert. Bella, Belarus, doesn't quite bond very well with the other lambs, instead of opting for the company of her brother, sister, and the Lili Mochi. She kind of kidnaps one and just kind of keeps it, and they're like, I don't know. And it's like, eh, it's fine. She just kind of keeps it around because she's cute. Japan is kind of standoffish. He doesn't really socialize all that well. He prefers quiet corners, books, things away from everyone else. He changes stuff, like shifting things a little to the left or right when things when people aren't looking. And Feli keeps trying to drag him into his friend group. Feli's a good boy. Feli's so cute. Prussia, Gilbert, is very quiet around authority figures, but he's a loudmouth little shit when he thinks the pictures, are, the adults are out of the picture. He loves going to mass. That's something else the lambs have to do. They all have to go to mass. They also have to go to a um, 
a dinner together usually, like a Sunday dinner. Probably the same day is going to mass, like afterwards or beforehand. Probably after. Yeah. They also all have to eat breakfast as a group. Yep. Father usually makes an appearance. He's required to at dinner time, and that sometimes that's the only time Fair ever sees him. And a lot of the lambs, too. Yeah. Because he, he tries to bond with them as the new generations come in to be like, Hey, kiddos. So sometimes when the later generations come in, they don't really see him as much because he's trying to bond with these new kiddos. Prussia loves going to mass, but he doesn't like all the conflict all the conflicting feelings he has about it. I feel like I'm worshipping the wrong god. Don't tell him about that. Ukraine is very motherly, the big sister of the group, and she takes her prayers very seriously. Though she has the same kind of conflicting feelings that Gilbert has. Most of the other lambs are unconsciously unnerved by her, but none of them know why. Exceptions being Yao, Matthew, and Antonio. Lithuania is more sedate and calm, but the first to call out when something is unfair. Like when Alfred steals Matthew's ideas and claims them as his own. He can't keep a secret to save his life. One of, he's one of Vanya's favorites, but a low-key favorite. But you can't- of course adults always claim they, they don't have favorites in their children, but they they do. They totally do. It's it's natural and it's common. He, as much as he tries, he can't help it. Hungary is outdoorsy with an active imagination, and she's the first to charge anything and everything new, mochi included. That includes some of the more dangerous mochi. She likes to rescue things and will challenge just about anything to wrestle. I I can just see her ch chasing. The Russia mochi around the garden with a stick. Yeah, she's probably the one who mostly figures out the traps and deactivates them. Yeah, she gets along well with all the other girls, and Vanya can't help himself. He kind of spoils them just a little bit. He never had girls. He wanted them, but he never had any. Then we come to the third generation. We didn't really flesh out their personalities very much. Yeah, from the third the... generation on, we didn't really do much. Like, the third generation's the only one with actual characters. The rest is just like, meh. So we don't really know how many generations there are. Because there's a lot of nations. There's a lot of nations, and Vani can only handle about eight or nine at a time. So, until they grow up a little bit more, and they go through a little bit, can't bring any more. So has to start again and again, but only with a certain amount of time passes between them. So you're free to fill in any other personalities that you think that these characters could have. They also tend to come back in family groups. So, say, when Turkey is brought back, Egypt would be brought back with him, Greece, Cyprus. Little tiny, this little tiny Cyprus, um, some of the Balkans might come back too. Yeah, so like, play the third generation, we never really said that one. It was Austria, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Norway, Iceland, Denmark, Sweden, and Finland. So, the rest of the Germanics and the Nordic group. That's the third gen, and again, everything from all out is just anything. You can fill in those spaces pretty easily. Because there's a lot of room for interpretation here. Yeah, and that's half the fun of it. Yeah. Like, where do these little kiddos sit? What, how, what kind of shenanigans did they get up to? How did they react to having this person as an older brother figure or a senpai? Yes. Now, Ed, we come to some of the common events that kind of mark um, the story as it goes along. Though I'm thinking, because, like, uh, we're almost at the end of the episode, so we might just oh. have this one be an earlier one so we can just go to the event straight forward from the next one. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So, so, there's all the characters and stuff, so next time we get stories and events from this thing. Oh, I wanted to add something real quick. Uh-huh. They don't really talk about Finland mochi. Nobody talks about Finland mochi. Finland void mochi's a fucking void. Empty-eyed, staring blankly. 
With leering from the end of dark hallways. Spooky. Very spooky. Sweden's not scared uh -huh. by it, though. Ugh. I would be. Yeah, it's unnerving, but I think it's probably the same as German emoji of just, it just stares, but it doesn't really do anything harmful. Other than probably make everything very, very cold. Yeah, if it's cold, it's probably a fin- Comes in handy during the summer, though. Probably, if you want to get anywhere near it. Sweden could. Probably Sweden could. put a bag over its head a little. Put a oh, hat on God. it. He puts it in a box! Ha! <laughs> anyway! Yes, so next time we're gonna go with events and stories. It's exciting. So, have a good day, everybody! Shall Bye! I? Bye!